compile. Gone Postal 28 says, salute Fred, peace to the young king. Absolutely. I appreciate you. No, man. And uh, so you actually own the land. You're paying a mortgage on the land currently. Oh, no, 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 no. We buying the school cash. You buying the school cash? Yes, sir. We don't, I don't do payments. My mama always taught me, if you're going to do something, make sure you buy it out right. The only thing I pay mortgage on is my house. All my cars that I got are paid for. Our our van, our school bus we just bought, all that paid for. I don't do, I don't do payments. <laughs> I don't do, have, do payments. Do you have partners in this? Uh, right. And I just got partners because of so much steam that we have. But at that time, I didn't even have no nonprofit or nothing. Like I was literally just doing this. I ain't know nothing about no, you know, 501c3. They know no, I was doing this all by myself. My mom would help me. You know, I call her and ask her to help me feed the boys. Like, bro, we had plenty of days where me and the boys was it like in here eating beanies and weenies noodles and like five dollar hot and ready. Like that's where we've been. We we've been from the down to up. Like when I tell you it's been a journey. It's been a journey. Like we've been stuck on the side of the road. We went to Cincinnati. We had a flat tire and we didn't have a jack. And we were stuck on the side of the road for like eight hours because the part of the country we was in at the time was like no in the middle of nowhere. So we had to wait three and four and five and six hours for them to finally find a tow truck that was two hours away. Like we got so when I tell you we have stories, we have stories, dude. Like it's it's amazing. But you know, hard work pays off. And you paid cash for land and building and pipe and waters with the electrical and we're paying cash for this big old building. When I tell again, big boy faith. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, what, have you closed on the on the property yet? Have you closed? We, we closed on a property. I think uh, May. I think we closed on it in May, but we already have the deal. Um, they allowed us to say we're purchasing the school, so. You can what? call them and confirm. Or <laughs> operational costs. Uh, so our operational costs probably going to be looking at, well, looking at the cost for the the utilities per year. So our the light bill for the last two full operational years of the school was thirty six thousand, which is not it. Was actually was cheaper than I thought it was going to be. Um, the lights, I mean, the water and gas was actually not bad at all. That was about five hundred dollars a month. Um, so all of that cost is already taken care of via endowments or uh, the vice president of AutoZone, um, the, the, the uh, financial officer, whatever he is, the CFO of AutoZone, yeah. Jameer Jackson, he's given us a yearly endowment um, to take care of all of our utility costs so that we don't have to worry about no matter how much it costs. He's taking care of our utilities and keeping the building operational. Mm. And then right. the school system is going to provide us with teachers that they're going to allow to teach our curriculum. They're just going to make sure that the teachers get paid. They want to make sure that we don't have to worry about putting that cost of trying to pay educators as well. So we're teaching our curriculum, but the school system is going to allow the teachers from their schools um, to be able to come to our school and teach for free. Well, for us for free, but for them, they get paid. Through the school district. Mm -hmm. And you create your own curriculum. Yep. Wow. Wow. Yep. Hold up. That's I told I told him I said I want to create a partnership and he made it happen. Like I'm so grateful for our superintendent because he's wanting this to happen because he's just like we need this. He was like our boys need this. He's like yeah we got to make this happen. So uh, he told us all we got to do like when we need field trips and stuff we can call the school superintendent, call the school system and say hey we going on a field trip here. He said just tell him how many buses we need and how many bus drivers and they gonna make it happen all the way down to if we need to feed them etc. The school system is literally helping us push this private program and that's that's the beautiful thing like it's a private program that they're wow. helping us push um it's, it's just so beautiful man like that's why i believe in having allies and not you know talking against nobody and stuff like that because you never know when you're gonna need somebody man and that's why i'm glad we have a black superintendent and a you know almost all black school board you know i mean it's, it's beautiful um our mayor's trying to help us our literally our city government is behind us like our city is rallying behind the expert boys school because they know this is what we need I got a couple more questions, and uh, the host mm -hmm. is on. The host is on. Hey, much respect to this young brother. I'm definitely supporting this brother. If you see me looking down, I'm I'm looking I, at the chat. I know. I can tell. Yeah, I'm looking at the chat. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what's your cash app? A link to donate. We must support this brother. You're absolutely right. Uh, Sunny, 
some schools demasculate young boys, right? Yeah, man, you're doing a mm -hmm. hell of a job. But DB, I know he got a couple of questions. What's up, DB? Go ahead. Man, I'm enjoying listening to the conversation. I don't know if I can add any any value to this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Go ahead. Reggie Owen yeah. says, this is dope. And we're back to DB. Appreciate you, Reggio. Got it. Yeah. So before the physical action, where did the thought and the idea originate for opening the school? Absolutely. Um, the idea originated for the school or do you want to ask about just the program in general? Because I know that's. Yeah, yeah, the program more than the, the more than the physical school. Got it. Yeah. So absolutely. Uh, again, I saw a need uh, in our community. Um, plus, I read a lot of books um growing up especially in high school i researched dr king martin all those guys uh wholeheartedly and one thing that i do believe our civil rights leaders make the mistake of not doing is training replacements and that's what i call myself doing now i'm training our replacement because imagine if martin and malcolm and those guys had like some apprentices like 13 14 year old kids rolling with them all the time teaching them all the time molding them all the time that's what i call myself doing now i'm literally training our replacement so whenever i do have to go start talking radical one day etc and they decide they want to off me brother you gotta have to drop a bomb on all these three thousand other boys i don't talk you got to drop a bomb on their kids that they're gonna teach you know that's 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 the goal training replacement so you know you killed dr king then you you killed everything because when nobody that to carry the torch you killed malcolm you killed everything because nobody was there to carry the torch you know so my my main thing is training replacements and these replacements want to be taught they want to get out of their conditions and i believe you know again i do believe there's some you know space for working with adults but i believe most of their minds are made up and i believe most of the change is going to happen with our youth i believe we're going to see a real shift in our culture you know with our youth um because their minds aren't made up the decision making part of your brain isn't to finish developing until you're 25. so if you can teach them ahead of time give them all these keys ahead of time I tell people all the time, people think I'm so cool at 21. I'm like, well, no, wait till my boys turn 21. They're going to be bad. They're going to be some <laughs> stand up brothers. You know, so I'm just like, you think I'm bad at 21? No, the boys in the X for boys, when they turn 21, bad. They're going to be awesome brothers. Absolutely. So training replacements is kind of where the idea came because I saw where our civil rights leaders made a mistake. And that's where I believe they made a mistake at, not training replacements. Wow. Yeah. We just. Is, is this... Go ahead. Go ahead, DB. Is this government funded, charter, private, and uh, also the the brothers that you started the the business with? Uh, like, what are the qualifications, or is it just good brothers that you knew? What business? What business are you talking about? The uh, X for Boys. Oh no, I started this organization all on my own. Um, I had no partners when I first started the X for Boys, like none at all. Uh, I started it straight out of my house um and i just simply made flyers I, I didn't even have like no llc or anything um i just kind of started it at my house to begin with and you know people started knowing me around the community for like just working with the boys and teaching them stuff then i finally did eventually get an llc and now of course we're a non-profit um because i didn't have all day i mean i was still i was a teenager myself when i started the program so i didn't even know about any of this stuff and nobody was helping me i was kind of just doing it on my own um at the time but the school will be no it will not be government funded not be a charter school it will be a private uh boarding institution got it go ahead Fred. okay uh steel city luke has a question for you congrats young man you made some questionable statements about George Floyd and Breonna Taylor. What are your thoughts now? I hope they have changed. It's probably something Tariq Nasheed said. I never said anything about George Floyd or Breonna Taylor. Okay. Uh, I've said we have a mural. I've said my, my boys and I painted a mural, the only mural in the city for George Floyd. And I went to the George Floyd protest. I got a live video I did uh, from that while I was there. So I'm not sure. Are you mm -hmm. documenting all of this that you're doing and in, in terms of building the school and are you yeah. doing documentary out of it? Yeah, I have a lot of um, pictures. Now, somebody's coming to do a documentary on us this summertime. Um, so they're supposed to be pitching it to Netflix and everything for this summer. So I think that's going to be really good. You want um, to pitch it to Netflix. I think they're going to take it. <laughs> no, no, but I'm telling you, I, I, I think your voice is going to be bigger than Netflix. I through, think so. No, I'm not talking about on, on the initial. I'm mm -hmm. talking about through the duration of the film. Mm -hmm. You understand? Like, yes, sir. It, it's man, you, man, you take that $300,000 from Netflix. I think you may be selling yourself 
Um, I done sold a few films. I <laughs> no, I think no, no, I, I'm I'm being this I hear you, yes, sir. My professional opinion in 40 years, you can make 10 million dollars off of that film. You understand? I believe it. You mm -hmm. understand? And uh and, and the licensing of it, they'll be able to license your name without you even knowing. You get what I'm right. saying? I, so, I agree. So everything you do, they monetize no matter right. you get what I'm saying. And, and, and yes, it, sir. Yeah, so 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 you know that, but but man, it's just extraordinary.